The wounded robot climbs heaps of twisted metal and scrap, wreckage of a past that nearly destroyed him. Reaching out into the dark, something lands on his hand, wings flapping, reminding him that there is still beauty to be found in the wasteland. Greetings, my name is Andy. I make novels, poems, sculptures, and puppets. Today I'll be sculpting a broken, battle-torn robot standing on some wreckage and marveling in wonder at a beautiful butterfly. I'll be using Super Sculpey and Sculpey Primo polymer clay. First, I'm going to take some armature wire and shape out his torso and legs. Next, I'm going to use more armature wire to make his arm. His other arm is missing, having been lost in an explosion. I take some smaller wire and attach his arm to his torso. Then I use aluminum foil to bulk out his torso. Here's where I decide to scrap the old base and start making a new one. I want it to look like a broken chunk of metal, like he's on part of a crashed vehicle or a broken bunker. I get it into the shape I want, then start drawing some lines with my needle tool. Using a small ball stylus tool, I make tiny indents to give the impression of rivets. Then I add some cracks with my explorer tool. And I'm happy with how that looks. So I'm going to sponge it down with some isopropyl alcohol to get rid of blemishes and fingerprints. Then I'll throw it into the oven to bake. While it's baking, I cover the torso with a sheet of clay and mold the torso into the shape I want. Next, I wrap a thin wire around the armature wire of the arm to make sure the clay can grab onto it. Then I cover the arm with clay. My broken metal base is out of the oven and cooled. I cover one leg with clay, then add some Sculpey oven bake clay adhesive to the ends of the legs so that when this bakes again, the adhesive will kind of glue the armature wire, the new clay, and the baked clay together really well. I finish the other leg, then start on the feet and knees. With those done, I work on the lower body. Next, I give him a very robot-looking elbow. Now to add some rivets to the feet. And I'm happy with how that looks so far, so it's time to destroy it a bit. This robot has been rocked by some kind of explosion on his right side. So I'm going to add all sorts of cracks onto his right knee and leg. You see, I'm not just a sculptor, I'm also a writer. And if there's one thing that we writers thrive upon, it's inflicting tragedy upon our poor, unsuspecting characters. But that's okay, because the secret is that readers love reading about set tragedy, so it's a win-win. Well, except for the characters. But they're not real, right? Anyway, content with the damage I've inflicted, it's time to make the robot's head. I mold some clay into the shape I want, then make some discs for the eyes. Oh, and don't forget the damage. I add an assortment of cracks and breakage to the side of his head. Now to use a piece of wooden skewer for the neck. With the head mostly finished, I add some damage to the shoulder where his missing arm has broken off. Next, I put some Primo clay through my extruder to make some wires. Sculpey Primo is a little more expensive than Super Sculpey, and it's good for thinner pieces of sculpture because it bends a bit after baking, so it's less likely to break. I attach the wires to the inside of the broken shoulder, so they're sticking out all haphazardly. Now I tear some strips of cloth and start wrapping them around my robot. I add on some clay and blend it in to give some wrinkles to the cloth. I'm happy with how it looks so I sponge it down to remove fingerprints and flaws. And now it's time to bake. 
Now that the body is all baked and cooled down, it's time to start on the hand. At first I decide to make the hand and the butterfly body one piece, but I don't like how the butterfly's body is looking and I cut the butterfly off. Instead I decide to make the butterfly completely out of wire without using clay. I feel like this will give an even greater contrast between the robot and the butterfly. I push its legs into the clay of the hands to secure it. Now I use some more oven baked clay adhesive so I can add clay to the neck and make sure the clay bonds to the wooden skewer. I add the robot's head and then I sponge off the head and hands so that I can bake it one last time. Alright, time to start painting this guy. I start off with some light teal for his head, arms, and legs. Some dark purple for his hand and his feet, though I end up changing the color of his feet later. A few shades of browns and tans for the ripped up cloth. Some lavender for his body, knees, and elbow. Now I'm going to paint some parts of him bronze and metallic paint looks much better with a base coat of black underneath. This is a trick I learned from an Ace of Clay video. Since I make a lot of robot sculptures and robot puppets, it's a very helpful trick for me. I've learned a ton from watching Ace of Clay's videos. You should definitely check them out. I'm going to paint the base silver to make it look like steel. So here's a black base layer for that. Since I've got the black paint out, I paint the battle damaged areas. My hope is to make them look burned and discolored. Now for the metallics. Bronze on his eyes, neck, and elbow. Some orange for the eyes to give him a sense of life. Silver for the base to make it look like steel. Now I'm going over the teal parts with a slightly darker metallic teal. I've used this paint on several of my sculptures. It's from Deco Art, and I love the way it looks. And he's looking awesome, but the colors of his feet are blending into the base too much, so I decide to paint them bronze. I paint some super dark blue over the battle damaged areas to give them a charred look. Time to paint the wires. I use red, green, and blue with some metallic gold on the ends to make them look like broken wires. Then I decide to paint the insides of his broken body with gold, and I really like the way it looks. I think it gives his wounds a heavier, visceral kind of feeling. And he's just about done. Now it's time for the butterfly wings. This is my book of short stories and poetry called Visions from the Dream Gyre. I'll leave a link in the description in case you want to check it out. About a year ago, my girlfriend and I had an apartment fire caused by lightning. A lot of my books were damaged by the smoke and aren't sellable, like this copy here. So I decided to weave my damaged book into another form of artwork. I'm cutting the wings out of a page from my short story entitled The Iris. Here is the excerpt I chose to cut the wings from. With two fingers, the iris reached into her mouth and dragged her nails along the inside of her cheek, pulling out a butterfly's wing, all golden and burgundy. Then she did the same with her other cheek, pulling out a second wing. When she put the two wings together, they began flapping madly lifting away from her into the air. She reached out and caught the wings, cupping them carefully in her hands. And as she slowly pulled her hands apart, the wings grew. And between the wings, an insect body formed and sprouted legs. She kept growing the creature until its body was almost half her size. Then she swiftly grabbed it and flipped it over her head and behind her, 
its legs wrapping themselves around her ribs and shoulders and chest, attaching itself to her back. She felt the creature flex and stretch along her spine, and she touched one of its legs reassuringly. Then she took two steps forward and leapt down into the cavern of crystal, letting it envelop her as the creature on her back beat its wings maniacally to slow their descent. And now that the wings are done, I stick them on with a bit of glue, and he's done. Thanks for checking out my video. Let me know what you thought in the comments. And be sure to subscribe to see more sculpting and puppetry videos. Until next time.